Ubisoft felt it necessary to come out with an apology that basically amounts to, we're sorry that you don't like what we're doing. We're not going to stop, so we're sorry you feel bad about it. It's your problem, though, but we're sorry that you feel that way. And that's basically what it says. I'm not going to bother to read this screed, but thankfully, Grums brings us the, uh, the dev talk version. This is what they're actually saying with all this gobbledygook, most likely written by ChatGPT. So this is what Grums translates for us. It says, we're scared. Nobody is pre-ordering. Please support us. This is the first paragraph. This says, first, we want to express our heartfelt thanks for all your support for the Assassin's Creed series, which is now... Has, has its own history spanning almost 20 years. Well, you know, it was a good run, right? And like I said, Grums isolates it. So now you get the pattern, okay? You get the pattern of how this is going to go. So Assassin's Creed Ubisoft writes, For many of our team, creating an Assassin's Creed game set in feudal Japan has been a long-cherished dream. Okay? Now Grums translates this for us, and he says, we're passionate devs, not a soulless corporation. Really, it's like we're an indie group. Don't you guys love indies? Right, so they're trying to present themselves as, we've been working our whole lives to build up Ubisoft big enough to be able to make a Japanese Assassin's Creed game. We finally got the power to do it, guys. You know, we're not in my mom's garage anymore, guys. We can make a real game. This is Ubisoft. This is a multi-billion dollar multinational corporation trying to play itself off as some, like, Pico Park or Among Us thing. So they go on and they say, um, but also some criticism, including from you, our Japanese players, we share your passion for history and deeply respect your care for the historical and cultural integrity of your rich heritage. Now, the problem with this is that as Grums translates, they say what's really being said here is we've barely had any complaints. That's why we're issuing uh, this huge, long-winded apology, hardly uh, nothing really. And then he goes down and further translates, and he says, this is why we stole so much art and mass Chinese and Japanese cultures together and put a black guy samurai into our game. It's respect, guys. Really. Respect for you, the Japanese. That's why they're lecturing you on how you feel about this. So, I'm sorry, my nose itches. And um, we have this next one. So, Grums continues to translate for us, because I don't speak dev. You know, I don't speak dev. I speak a lot of internet lingo, but I don't speak dev. Anybody remember Leet? Comment down below if you remember Leet and write it in Leet, right? We'll bring back the old internet just for a second down here in the YouTube comments section. Confuse all the Zoomers, huh? They won't know. They don't even know how to read time, right? <laughs> so uh, part two here says, the immersive and respectful representation of feudal Japan. And it says, we spared no expense. We hired non, a non-historian who wrote about man-boy love in feudal Japan because we respect Japan. We've stolen so much art, but it shows our love for Japan. We even used uh, that sword from One Piece. You love anime, right? What's your problem? We got that anime guy's anime sword thing. It's got the grippy thing in the middle. You guys love grippy things? Come on. Why are you mad? Then they go on. They go on. However... Our intention has never been to present any of our Assassin's Creed, inglu including, including Assassin's Creed shadows as factual representations. Well, duh. Nobody ever expected that. Nobody assumed that either. You're a guy literally trying to hunt down an alien artifact so he doesn't screw up the past. You're using an advanced, uh, advanced genetic recession machine that takes your brain, basically your, your consciousness, and shoves you back however many hundreds, maybe thousands of years, into a, into a genetic ancestor in which you go around and correct whatever corrosive force this alien presence has had. Okay? Nobody thought, wow, this is how history actually happened. Not a soul. But the problem was is that Ubisoft went out and insisted that they based Yasuke off of a real historical legendary African samurai. And as we found out, you can go ahead and check out the previous podcasts on this. I talk about this as a whole playlist dedicated to this whole Assassin's Creed debacle. You go ahead and check that out. And I'm not kidding, man. They stole this stuff, they rewrote this guy's life, and they're proud of it. This is what this is all about right here. This is an apology. This is them waggling their finger in your face saying, we're sorry that you're mad. We're sorry that you're upset with what we're doing. We're sorry that you're affected, but we're not. 
And that's all this reads. You wait. This is what Grum says to us. It says, Please ignore the last two paragraphs. We totally didn't mean it. This is fantasy. Just because we hired historians and researchers and respect Japan and marketed it that way for months with our man-boy love historian and fraud Thomas Lockley. These are two separate people. As far as I know, Mr. Lockley is not into man-boy love. We don't know. I'm not going to assume he is or isn't. That's all. He's, they're talking about Miss, uh, Miss Hori. Uh, I believe that's her name. Uh, and she came, she was brought in to advise on the era, but her main focus is in Buddhist monks having sex with younger Buddhist monks, male, male on male. So, well, as implied by man boy love, but I, let's get back into it. So it says, this is a fantasy. How dare you get it wrong? Okay, right? So this is, again, this is, they're trying to tell you after the previous part, telling you they hired historians, they hired cultural experts, they made sure that they had like cultural accuracy uh, oversight. Then they immediately go into the next paragraph and say, well, that doesn't matter, though, because we're just going to make it up anyway. Our game has always been a fantasy series, so whatever we put into it is just for funsies. It doesn't matter if it's actually history. A little bipolar, huh? A little bit of a seesaw, flip-flopper attitude. Maybe Kamala Harris wrote this, huh? Or whoever writes her uh, twisty, whirly, timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly speeches, huh? So anyway... We'll go down here and it says, our team extensively collaborated with external consultants, historians, researchers, and internal teams at Ubisoft Japan to inform our creative choices. The biggest problem with this is they just told you it's fantasy. So what was the point of all that? Huh? If you're just going to jam all these cultures together anyway, if you're just going to steal a man's name and rewrite his whole life. If you don't know, by the way, if this is the first time you're hearing this, Yasuke was a real person. He was not. A legendary samurai. He had an extraordinary life. I talk about it in a myriad of other videos on this topic, so feel free to check those out. Today we're focusing on their apology, but still, this is again, they stole his name. And the whole crux of this problem is, is they keep implying that their changes to feudal Japan, to Sengoku era Japan rather, my apologies, to Sengoku era Japan, these changes were based in historical fact. And this is not the case. This is what the biggest problem is, is they keep coming in and relabeling Japanese history, reassigning the truth of it. You've got Lockley now and Adkins, uh, two Englishmen, going around and insisting that the Japanese were taking part in the African slave trade. Can I ask you how that's possible? Have you looked at a globe recently? You don't even need to. Check out Google Earth. Type in Africa to Japan. A little bit of a journey there. And the way we, that the Europeans and, and people that, that were enslaving these people, these uh, Africans, what they were doing was is they were putting them in ships, chaining them to the floor, laid down. It, there wasn't like a bunch of them standing around doing crew work. They were chained to the floor. And you're going to tell me that most of those people survived, for, you know, for the purposes of sale, right? Because they won't, if you're going out and these people are dying in great numbers, it's not going to help your sales when you finally get to Japan and you have a bunch of dead bodies. And I know I'm speaking very, you know, heartlessly about this, but we must remember this is the claim that these other people are making. So when you confront them with the logic of the actual era, no fluff, no sugar, when you confront them with the reality that I'm talking about, that these people were chained to the floor of that ship. They were put on their backs for months, for weeks, okay, to make that cross the Atlantic from the west of Africa all the way up into, into the Atl North Atlantic, almost to Canada, I think up into Canada too. It wasn't just the United States. So there you go. I mean, this again, if also falls on its face, there would be a massive African-American population in Japan if this was the case, right? Because we have it here in the United States. We have it in England. We have it in Europe. Wherever there was a concentration of oppressed and chained up Africans, there became a population of them that were, you know, born to the land after they were emancipated, freed, or however you want to word it, released from bondage. That's a good word for it, right? And you would see this massive population in Japan, but you do not. You do not see that. But I'll go on. So it says, once again, for the third time in this apology, as Grums writes to us, he's providing us the dev talk, remember? And he says, we are telling you we hired the best historians and researchers, but we are totally not marketing this as a historical game, guys. Just so you know, it's all fantasy. We hired all these people because they're just really cool to hang out with, right? We just want to party hardy with Thomas Lockley and Miss Horry. 
They just, they're really great. You know, you wouldn't believe the kind of breakdance moves that Lockley has, man. You get him on his back and he spit, oh, wait a minute. Anyway, if we get it wrong and crap all over Japan, just remember, we're only crapping on you as a fantasy. That's right, they're only relabeling, repainting, and distorting Japanese history as a fantasy. It's all make-believe, despite us telling you we hired in historians and cultural experts and even called upon our own offices in Japan to help us clarify the history. It's a fantasy, though. So Grums continues, he's a very helpful fellow, translating this dev talk for us, and he says, uh, here's what Ubisoft says. They say, despite these sustained efforts, we acknowledge some elements of our promotional materials have caused concern within the Japanese community. For this, we sincerely apologize. Now, see, the problem with this is, is that what is the Japanese community? What the hell are you talking about? It's caused trouble with the Japanese. What is a Japanese community? What are you talking about? Is there like some, is it Little Tokyo? Are there people in Little Tokyo in California that are pissed off about this? Is that what you're talking about? Just a little group of people out there on the street that are big mad? Is that what we're talking about? Or are we talking about a whole nation of people? A whole race of people? What are you doing? What, this is the same logic they apply. They go around and they say the Indian community, the black community, the Native American community, the Jewish community, the Islamic community, Muslim community, however you want to frame it. That's, that's what they're, so they're like monolithic, the whole situation here. They're not even addressing you. They're just applying it to everybody. I wish that every Japanese person was mad about this, but you and I both know that a lot of people have better things to worry about. That's what these guys like Thomas Lockley take advantage of. They take advantage of the fact that you and me have jobs. We have things to do in our lives. If you're lucky enough to have a family, that's where your focus should be. And yet that's what they exploit. They exploit the fact that you have better things to do. So they set in and slowly rewrite, re rewrite your history. And all of a sudden, one day you're sitting down for breakfast, reading a newspaper. There's a headline about a legendary black samurai. And your kids are telling you all about the fact that this guy saved Japan all by himself. Okay. That's how they do it. That's how they do it. It's that quick. It really is. All it takes is one generation. You remember that American president, Ronald Reagan, that said that. All it takes is one generation. That's it. And that's the threat of Thomas Lockley. That's the threat of this stuff. You can't, Ubisoft, make your fantasy game. I told you, create Jeff the Black Samurai, have him wash up on shore, and he fights origami dragons that burst out of like one of those New Year's ball moons, right? So the moon looks like one of those pop-open confetti balls that you get at uh, New Year's, right? And that's it. He just fights them, and it would be badass. I've been told in the chat, in the comments down below, they'd buy that game. What are you doing, Ubisoft? Do that instead. Jeff the Samurai. Assassin's Creed, Jeff. Come on. What's your, what are you worried about? This is the other thing that should be infuriating. They're doing all of this, right? Because they don't want to tell you that they didn't have confidence in just telling Yasuke's story. I've told, I said it again. I said it earlier here. He has an extraordinary story, and they didn't think it was cool enough. So a bunch of French Canadians got up with an Englishman who found his way into a Japanese university and decided they were going to rewrite a real person's life because it wasn't cool enough for them. They didn't think you and me would want to buy the story of a guy that was, you know, treated pretty mercifully considering it was the 1500s and he was practically a space alien to most of the people he encountered. Okay? It's bizarre to me that we want to sit here and say it's okay to rewrite this man's life. It's okay to rewrite Japanese history because it's my vidge game. It's my vidge game. I, I could do whatever I want in my vidge game. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Don't tell me that it's historically based then. Tell me that you took a page from the Sengoku era. We borrowed the visuals of what we think the Sengoku era looks like. And that's it. Do you remember all of this in, in the Ghost of Tension Kuma and Shogun and uh, uh, Oni Mushu? Do you remember all this? No, of course you don't. Want to know why? Because the devs behind that stuff, they didn't concern themselves with trying to tell you that the game had legitimate roots in history. They, concerned with, with, they got concerned with delivering something that re rewarded your expectations of history. Okay? There's a big difference here. 
you hear this thing about uh, usurping expectations from clowns like uh, Ryan Johnson. The trouble is, is you don't want to do that. You don't want to surprise the audience by giving them something they didn't expect. That's bad. You want to reward the audience's expectation in a way that doesn't feel predictable. This feels predictable. The world is full of all these DEI reassignments. Yasuke gets his name stolen and a completely new identity strapped to him because he's not cool enough for Westerners as a servant. All right? That's what's going around. That's the reality of this situation. And that's where the core of this whole problem is, is that Ubisoft thinks they can just rewrite history, that they can take a real live man's life. You know, he's deceased now. They could take a real man's life and just reassign a purpose to it, just like that. I don't approve of this in any game. You want to show me more games? Please put them down in the comment. I'll mention, I'll mention them in the next video about this. It is absolutely wrong to take a real living person and make them a playable character in a video game, rewriting their history entirely. NPCs are an entirely different story. That time you fought George Washington, entirely different. That is a fictional scenario. That is absolutely a fictional scenario. But when you sit here and tell me that Yasuke was a legendary samurai in real life and that's how he found his way into the protagonist position of Assassin's Creed Shadows in Japan, I'm going to have some questions. I'm going to have a lot of questions. So it says, Actually, our CEO and staff called Elon Musk and gamers racist, hateful bigots and said you all were fake Japanese pretending to be mad. But hey, Bygones be bygones, right? So now they're saying like, hey, you know, this is the guys behind this. Despite our best efforts to try and make things right with you, you're just so angry at us. Why, why bully? Please no bully. Ubisoft, bunch of babies. They go on and they say, based on the constructive criticism we have received, we will continue our efforts until we put this game into your hands and beyond. And then Grums provides a translation for us and says, look, we hear you. We won't change or anything because we ship in three months, but we will work hard to ship on time and put this turd in your hands before you can realize that we effed up. It's just that simple, right? And they go on, they say, we would also like to clarify that while we have been consulting with many people throughout the development process, there are in no way, they are those people, Mr. Thomas Lockley, you know, they are in no way responsible for the ill-fated decisions that are taken by the creative teams in interests of gameplay and entertainment. Oh boy, entertainment. Lovely. Consequently, we respectfully request any criticism not be directed at Thomas Lockley, both internal and external. Mm -hmm. Right? And so Grums translate for, translates for us, and he says, nobody, and we mean nobody, is responsible for this. We spent millions on consultants, artists, and artists, but we didn't actually listen to them. It was for laughs. Like I said, they're great at partying. Thomas Lockley's got some great breakdance moves. You wouldn't believe it. And says, we are proud to hide behind the nebulous collective shield of the creative team to justify all our crappy decisions. Nobody helped us to reach these conclusions. Nobody is actually capable of making good decisions here anyhow. Come on, guys. We'll see you later. You know, that's, that's what they're doing. They're like, bye. So here we go again, though. I want to let you know, since this apology came out, IGN decided to make it a retraction. Very curious one. It says here, uh, the original text from them about this is the game's male protagonist, a samurai based on the historical black samurai Yasuke. This is what IGN had to say about it. And now, oh no, that's different. That's a little different now, isn't it? Oh no, what happened? Oh no. So it says now, due to limited historical evidence, there is no conclusive proof as to if Yasuke was a samurai, a retainer, or another role entirely. Oh no, they had to do one of those retractions. Oh no, that's terrible. Let me know how my Count Dankula impression is, you know. Especially D Dank, if you're watching this, let me know down below, yeah? I can fill in sometime, it'd be great. But uh, now all of this is very well and good, right? Finally, a little bit of progress, but wouldn't you know, who's always in the middle of these things? Somehow finding her way smack dab in the middle and Guess what? Alyssa Mercante's mad about this. She's totes mad that somebody had to say sorry to the bigots on the interweb. Can you believe it? 
somebody had to say sorry to people like Geeks and Gamers Jeremy and like other people who say things. Can you believe that people say things on the internet? Alyssa Mercante cannot believe this. So here we go. And I'm going to use that voice to read what she has to say. So buckle up. If you don't like it, sorry. <laughs> so she goes on and she's very like, you know, very upset about this. Here's the first, par first paragraph. She says, on July 23rd, in response to the ongoing backlash against uh, the lead character in the upcoming Assassin's Creed Shadows develop, uh, game, whatever, developer Ubisoft released a lengthy statement. The response on X, uh, formerly known as Twitter, were exactly what you'd expect. Racist images, slurs, and calls for historical accuracy in a video game series that has always been steeped in science fiction. Oh my gosh! An unpublished community note, a feature frequently used by users to add context. She says this because she, excuse me, she says this because she got community noted. Anyway, back to the Valley Girl. Reads Assassin's Creed Neighbor Squire. Like I would say what that, I wouldn't say what that actually says there. I'm just going to say neighbor. I'm just going to imply that that says neighbor there. We all know what that says, and that's a good thing that that's kind of locked away, that that's not any approved status, that that's somebody out there telling a real dumb joke. Going to get themselves into real big trouble playing around like that, but for the purposes of YouTube and not getting this channel canceled, that says neighbor, all right? So we're going to move on to what she has to say next before we get the channel killed. And it says, harnessing... The power that forever changed the mainstream of politics. And she's referring to the, uh, the, the ascension of Trump, right? And she even goes on here and she says, get this. She's trying to draw uh, January 6th into this disagreement about <laughs> Assassin's Creed, right? About these people stealing Japanese culture, rewriting Yasuke's name, Yasuke's life. And now they're like, BT dubs. She's like, BT dubs, January 6th. Who remember that? She says... Many believe it directly led to both Trump securing the election in 2016 and the Capitol riots in January 6. Part of what ensures that this army remains active is the consistently is consistently feeding them things they should be outraged about. For Trump and his ilk, it was a variable laundry list of perceived problems that only he could fix. Immigrants, that's a word I can't say on YouTube. Taxes, break for a billionaire, right? Transgender people, like Title V rollback. Oh, my glob. Abortion, they ban it. It's in the state's hands, okay? It's not banned, it's in the state's hands. Vote with your feet, like Reagan said. Remember that old Reagan guy? He said a few things that were right. Vote with your feet, darling. You don't like it where you're at? Go somewhere else. You're an American. You're allowed to do that for now. There's always something to be up in arms about. Always something to ensure you are scared, angry, concerned, and ready to do whatever it takes to get him reelected. Did you notice anything about that paragraph? Did you notice anything about that? Let's just, let's go on. It's, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. So she goes on and she's complaining about how, like, you know, we like here on this channel, we are reacting to the stuff that they're doing. We are reacting to them stealing the culture, rewriting Yasuke's life, and then poo-pooing the Japanese for disagreeing with it. Poo-pooing the Japanese for not liking having their culture rewritten before their very eyes. And so she goes on and she says, The men who were first ringing the reactionary bell see dollar signs thanks to the monetization of virality, right? Virality perpetuated by Elon Musk, by YouTube, by Facebook, and they want more. Alyssa, I think I've solved the problem with Kotaku. You guys aren't making stuff that's supposed to get money, right? Part of this whole thing about producing media is that you're meant to be entertaining and engaging while you're bringing information to people so that they feel the need to support you and be part of that because you're bringing their attention to something. And by being entertaining with that, you can get a monetized return. Like what we're doing here. We're talking about Assassin's Creed. Yes, we do a lot of conversation about it. Yes, we care about it here. Nerdigans, myself... Spencer, Jacob, Josh, most of the people you see appear on this channel are very concerned with Japan. We like their culture. We're, some of us grew up with anime, some of us grew up with games. For me, I'm just fascinated by the culture itself. I'm just amused by what I learn every day, even with the commenters below from Japan that want to tell me about life there and some of the history. It's always good to learn something new. But I want to be clear, we are making money talking about this, right? 
one of the driving factors why there is so much conversation about this is because there's money in it. But I want to remind you, that's how Fox News works. That's how CBS works. That's how NBC works. That's how every other institution on the planet that's involved in media delivery works. You don't give people stuff they don't want. Okay? You end up like Disney when you do that. It's ridiculous. So this is her complaint. Oh, no. You guys, you're being rewarded for your efforts. Oh, you jerk-offs. I'm sure you like it. I'm sure you like being rewarded. You jerk-offs enjoying your rewards. This is Alyssa's attitude. But it gets worse. It gets worse. She goes on. She quotes uh, uh, Gita. I think it's Gita Jackson. I could be wrong. Could be Gita. I'm not sure. Please, I'm not trying to be funny. I don't know how to pronounce that name. And I'm trying my best. I think it's Gita. I could be wrong, could be Jita, I'm not sure. But it, it's, the, it's a writing called Aftermath. And so she says, Race, racism isn't a logical position. So you cannot defeat it with logic. Facts just don't matter to a racist, especially not the tedious kind of racism who makes their home in video game culture. There will always be a new heritage split, okay? So what she's trying to express by quoting this person is, there's always going to be a conflict so long as there's a reward for it. And it's almost like there's a pattern here, right? Like there's, there's something we had like to deal with this over the past like decade and a half, right? Like 20, almost 15 years now, we've had to deal with people who just keep, keep hell rolling all the time. There's always something to be angry about. Someone's being ingested upon. Someone's being punished against their will. Someone's being shot, you know? This sort of thing. So there's always something new, like Alec Baldwin shooting these people. Apparently, it's not a concern for people like Alyssa Mercante, right? So she goes on, and she's freaking out here. And I'm, I'm going to skip over a lot of this. This is a big, long, like, oh, my gosh, the world is ending paragraph. I'm just going to jump down here to the, to the bottom, and we'll pick it up here with... Uh... So what she's saying is that these are, this is all part of a avalanche of social media conversation about the infection of DEI requirements, leftist politics, and out-and-out -out Marxism in the video game industry now. You can go back and take a look at our coverage of Sweet Baby Inc. to really find out what drove most of the conversation you're going to hear her complaining about, all right? So right here it says, before that it was romance options in Dragon Age, the Veil Guard. Before that it was Jean Grey in the upcoming Wolverine game. Before that it was the trans cosmetics in the Call of Duty games. Before that it was the DEI wording in the Nintendo job posting. Before that it was a woman in journalism reporting on the workplace environment that is stu uh, at the studio behind Black Myth Wukong. Before that, it was the removing of the butt uh, from the boy's firecracker uh, in the Warzone video game. Before that, it was the politics in Helldivers 2. Before that, it was the race swapping comic book characters. Before that, it was another jawline in Perfect Dark Remake. Before that, it was the female custodes in Warhammer. Oh no. People have opinions on the internet. Can you believe it? A Kotaku writer. They can't handle opinions. Who would have ever have heard of that, right? A Kotaku writer that can't handle opinions from other people. And here it is. All of this manufactured rage. This is coming from people that'll tell you that there's Tiffa's shirt is too low cut. These are people that are going to tell you that the cards you collect from all the women you have sex with in uh, the Witcher games, right? That's too much. That's too over the top, right? All of that manufactured rage, that's, that's not a problem. It's your manufactured rage that's wrong, right? Your rage is fake. Her rage is real, okay? You being upset about all of this cultural appropriation, the theft of culture, the rewriting of culture, the poo-pooing of the Japanese people for simply existing, right? That's fake. But her being upset about sex in video games that don't involve hideous women, right? That's real. She says, all of this manufactured rage has been rammed down our throats, rammed down the throats of irresponsible young people, impressionable rather, not irresponsible, impressionable young people in the last 45 days alone. Gee, it's almost like it's kind of a page out of your guys' book, right? The left, just pummeling people with problem after problem after problem after problem after problem until they concede that there's a problem. Hmm, that's weird. It's weird that you're noticing that, Alyssa, and it's a little late. And that's what I want to say about this, is that it's ridiculous that we find ourselves in such a position. 
It's ridiculous that we find ourselves in such a hole. I want you to go ahead and go out into the world today and just sort of think about this. Consider that there are people like Alyssa Mercante out there that are over the moon with anger right now because Ubisoft was forced to acknowledge that they have made a nation of people concerned about what they're doing. They called you the Japanese community, so you might as well be the Japanese community, right? If you're in Japan, you are the Japanese community. Congratulations. Every last person in Japan is apparently part of Ubisoft's concern. I'm okay with that. I really wish it was the truth. I know it's not, but I really wish it was the truth. So remember that as you go out into the world today. Alyssa Mercante is mad, right? Because you had the power to make a multi-billion dollar, multinational corporation kneel. And she will never have that power. And that is what I want you to go out into the world and think about today, is that you, you mister or lady, You've got some power. You can make change happen and peaceful change at that. Nobody had to feel any real pain over this. Maybe some emotional pain, but that's it. Good job, guys. Until the next one, good luck out there.